Hey everybody, I am very sweaty, just got out of class, but I have a lot of energy and I wanted to hop on here and do our Herner Happy Hour for the week, so happy Thursday. Um, so, you guys know that I usually like to talk about things that are front of mind for me, things that real life we're dealing with in the studio or with my instructors currently. So I wanna to talk today about mic issues and headset issues, able to make that happen. Um, so these mics, something that's really important is keeping them dry. Um, so if you, and by the way, we have a studio mic, but I also have my own and some of my instructors have their own because people, when people don't take care of it or that you're able to just use a mic that works, right? The worst thing in the world is when you hop on to use it and it doesn't work. So first things first, when you come to class, you set up your mic. So you put batteries in it. I'm guessing you'll need batteries. Um, it should stay unplugged. So I can rotate my phone. Hang on. Okay, I don't know. So you can unplug this piece right here when you're not using it. Um, that's best practice because you want these things to stay dry and dry out. And often these get covered with sweat. I'll show you our old one. Um, it's a little bit like crusty. I don't know if you can see that. Um, and the inside is kind of broken because it got so soaked with sweat and it didn't get a chance to dry out. So always unplug those. Um, the other thing is these little puffs, you always want to have one of these on the end of the mic. So you should never be talking directly into the end of the mic. If that gets wet, and if that gets covered with sweat and spit. Uh, also during class, they just won't be able to hear you. The other thing, I'm just going to keep going with these tips. So when you put these suckers on, be very careful because if you press down too hard on that piece of the mic, you're going to break it and it's very easy to break um, and you won't realize it's broken until the sound is a little muffled and then it'll go out on you entirely. So not to scare you, but just be careful. Um, the other thing you always want because that can happen and things do happen, always have a backup headset. So whether it's your studio's investment or your own, having a backup is key uh, so you don't wind up with a last minute, oh my God, I have nothing to use for a mic. Um, in terms of these suckers, so a lot of people will use um, condom packets around them to protect them from the sweat because, again, sweat is killer for these guys. Um, you can do that. You can use, I use a tune belt. So this guy is basically just a belt and the thing goes back there. Or you could use both. Um, I haven't had an issue with sweat being so much that I need both the condom else. You can get, buy those on Amazon. They're cheap. Um, I do recommend that. Just clipping it to yourself is leaving it open to a lot of sweat issues. Um, when you have the headset on, so you don't want, oh, let me get this out. I think I took my puff off, of course. But the idea is, hang on. Now, imagine I have a puff on this, right? You want it, you don't want it so close to your mouth that you're like licking it. Right, you want it a little bit far away and right off the corner of your mouth. That's gonna get you the best sound. You also wanna make sure, which is hard to tell when the puff is on, that the flat part of this is facing you. So sometimes when you put the puff on, lies it, so just make sure you're feeling delicately for that flat part and that's what's facing you. Um, the other thing is, so like I said, my head is small, so I had to buy my own headset so that it actually fits on my head. Some people use headbands or clips to make sure it's secure, um, but do you, you do want to test that out because if you're using a mic that's too big for you in the middle of class and it's falling all over the place, sound will be cutting in and out. So these are all things to keep in mind when you're using a mic, and I will say that a strong mic and a good voice and good quality sound is so crucial to a good class so crucial and that includes the music so you want to test your mic with the music playing and make sure it all sounds well and good you want to walk around the room while you're testing so in each part of the room you're checking to make sure it sounds good everywhere um, notice where there's any feedback and avoid those areas so sometimes if you stand directly in front of the speaker with your mic on you're going to get the feedback the loud piercing sound that no one wants so just make sure while you're walking around the room see where they are um, I guess that's kind of it. We have had, like I said, some mics break recently, so we've had some issues with this. This is why it's front of mind for me. I'm curious if you guys have any sound issues that you wanna talk about, any questions about it, I'm happy to answer. These things are complicated, and this is the kind of stuff that no one tells you when you start. You just expect questions about mics or sound or anything. I am very quickly learning. Oh, one more thing I can show you, actually. So on the inside of these Shure suckers, 
there's a little dial over on the corner. So these two middle buttons are how you set your channel. So that'll be how you connect it to the device that actually makes it work with the stereo. You can see I'm very knowledgeable about these names. Um, but the, that'll set your channel. You won't touch those two buttons once the channel is set, but this dial over on, the, on your left, my right, um, that dial is the gain on the mic. So you wanna make sure that that's set to them with the mixer on your music, on your stereo, whatever it is, uh, the mixer. So there's gain on both. You just wanna make sure it's not all the way up for both because that's where you'll get that feedback. So it'll take a little messing around to find the right settings. Again, walking around the room, checking, making sure everything sounds good. If it doesn't, that's where you adjust those things. Take a picture of it and you take a picture of what it looks like on the mixer so that if somebody else comes in and does a class and totally changes it up, you know how to get it back to, to normal once you get in there and you can just set it to those levels and forget it, set it and forget it, right? Um, so again, I know this was a lot. Hopefully you can go back and, and listen to this while you're in your studio and, and looking at your mic and have it all in front of you. Um, and these are just the mics we use. You might use something different. I do recommend these, they are great. Um, and if you have any questions, really, like anything on this, just post them in the comments. I'll come back. Just make sure you tag me so I see it. Uh, if you guys don't tag my name to a point where it's like linking me, it doesn't notify me. So I'm, I don't always see those comments. So just tag me, ask your questions. Um, have a great rest of your day, guys, and I'll talk to you soon.